My dear children, welcome back to English class. I wish everyone doing good at home. We are trying our best to reach you in this pandemic time through virtual classes. Keep in touch with us. Remember, we are always here to help you. Okay? Shall we start? Yes. Hello children. Adventures in a Banyan Tree is a short story written by Ruskin Bond, an Indian writer in English. Shall we see a short biography of him? Yes. Let's have a look. My dear children, the story Adventures in a Banyan Tree portrays the happy childhood of the writer blended with enchanting nature. Shall we watch one such video? Sure, here is it. Hello children, did you watch the video? How was it? Was it enchanting? Sure, I know, you have enjoyed it. We know nature is for all living beings. It's a home. Let me brief you the main ideas of the previous class in the light of the textual questions you were given. I hope you all have attempted them. Let's see the first question. House and grounds were of grandfather's domain. But the magnificent old banyan tree was mine. Why did the boy say so? My dear children, in the beginning, we have seen the magnificent old banyan tree that gave the boy endless pleasure. As his grandfather is very old, he cannot climb the banyan tree. So the boy enjoyed maximum freedom in the banyan tree. 
Later, we learned that the boy made friendship with the grey squirrel. Let's see the second question then. How did the squirrel become the friend of the boy? The squirrel found the boy was not armed with a catapult or air gun. Also, the boy gave him cake and pieces of biscuits. Let's see the next question. What did the friends of the squirrel think about his friendship with a human? What might have made them think so? Look at the answer here. The friends thought that it was foolish to trust a human as they always harm with a catapult or air gun. Here comes the next question. How was the banyan tree the noisiest place during the fig season? In the spring season, the banyan tree was the noisiest place as it was the fig season. The small red fig fruit attracted many birds as they squabble each other. Let's see the next question then. Where did the boy spend the afternoon when it was not too hot? And why did he do there? It's an interesting question. The boy built a platform halfway up on the banyan tree and there he spent the afternoon and read many books. It shows that the boy had a habit, the habit of reading. And let's see the next question that follows. What were the books that he read? The Treasure Island, The Huckleberry Finn, The Mowgli Stories, The Novels of Edgar Rice Burroughs and Louisa May Alcott. Definitely it shows that the boy had a habit of reading variety of books. So now it's the time for the last assignment that were given in the last class on the importance of reading. One of my students had sent me a short note on the importance of reading. Here it is. My dear children, let's read the remaining part of the story. The story of the boy continues. While I read, please listen carefully. Watch the screen now. When I did not feel like reading, I could look down through the banyan leaves at the world below. At grandmother hanging up or taking down the washing, at the cook quarreling with a fruit vendor, or at grandfather grumbling at the hardy Indian marigolds which insisted on springing up all over his very English garden. Usually nothing very exciting happened while I was in the banyan tree. But on one particular afternoon, I had enough excitement to last me through the summer. That was the time I saw a mongoose and a cobra fight to death in the garden while I sat directly above them in the banyan tree. It was an April afternoon and the warm breezes of approaching summer had sent everyone, including grandfather, indoors.
I was feeling drowsy myself and was wondering if I should go to the pond behind the house for a swim. When I saw a huge black cobra gliding out of a clump of cactus and making for some cooler part of the garden. At the same time, a mongoose, whom I had often seen, emerged from the bushes and went straight for the cobra. In a clearing beneath the tree, in bright sunshine, they came face to face. Cobra knew only too well that the grey mongoose, three feet long and a superb fighter, clever and aggressive. But the cobra was skillful and experienced fighter too. He could move swiftly and strike with the speed of light. And the sacks behind his long, sharp fangs were full of deadly venom. It was to be a battle of champions. Hissing defiance, his forked tongue darting in and out, the cobra raised three of his six feet off the ground. and spread his broad, spectacled hood. The mongoose bushed his tail, the long hair on his spine stood up. In the past, the very thickness of hair had saved him from bites that would have been fatal to others. Dear children, I hope you have listened to the story. Now, I will help you to understand the story with the help of a few questions. Listen carefully and try to answer the questions. What did the boy do when he was not feel like reading? Yes, he observed everything beneath the banyan tree. So the boy sits on a platform which he had built halfway up the banyan tree and when he was not feel like reading, he observed everything. He observed everything. Okay. See the next question. What were the activities of the different people that he observed? He observed many things. He observed the activities of the different people. So the question is clear. What were the activities of the different people that he observed? He observed the mother hanging up or taking down the washing and cook quarreling with fruit vendor grandfather grumbling at the Indian marigolds Why did grandfather grumble at Indian marigolds? Yes the marigolds insisted on springing up all over his English garden English garden. Look at the picture of an English garden.
Dear children, in the English garden, plants are planted in an arranged manner so that it may look beautiful. Look at the images of marigolds. Indian marigold scatters everywhere and it grows everywhere. So grandfather grumbles, right? Is it clear to you? Now, what we generally do in summer days? What we generally do in summer days? Ah, we all stay at home. Everyone knows that summer days are too hot and we all stay indoors. Let's see the next question. What was the boy doing in the afternoon while the grandfather and all others were inside home? Yes, the boy was sitting on the platform feeling drowsy, feeling sleepy. Then he wished to take a bath in the pond behind the house. What was the long-lasting excitement he got on that particular afternoon? Yes, he saw a mongoose and a cobra fighting to death. You can watch the images on the screen. What was the cobra searching for? Do you have any idea? Yes, cobra was searching for a cool place to rest. And what did the mongoose do? The mongoose went straight for the cobra. Now, what are their understanding about their skills in fighting? Let's see that. The cobra had a good understanding about his enemy. That mongoose was a superb fighter, clever and aggressive. Dear children, and what about the cobra? The cobra was a skillful and an experienced fighter too. He could move swiftly and strike with his sharp fangs filled with a deadly venom. Let's watch the movements of the mongoose and cobra. I think they are about to start a fight. Wait, just watch. It's game on. Snakes to the mongoose are like peanuts to the squirrel. Guts of steel make it. Squirrel colonies usually work together to fend off predators but this female has decided to go it alone. She fluffs her tail to appear bigger, distracts the cobra, and shields her body from the snake's strikes. Sharp teeth deliver a quick bite to its tail. Hello children, you have watched the moves of mongoose and cobra. The cobra's hissing is frightful. His forked shaped tongue darted in and out and it raised three feet off the ground and spread its hood. Let's see the image of the cobra and its hood on the screen. Now, dear children, let's watch the mongoose. It bushed his tail, its long hair on its spines. She flushed her tail to appear bigger. 
This thick hair had saved the mongoose from the bites of snakes. Dear children, they are ready to fight with each other. We will see that fight later. Now, it's your turn to read the text silently and note down the difficult vocabulary. Dear students, these are the unfamiliar words you may have noted down. Dear children, hope all the words have been clear to you now. Now, please answer these textual questions. Look at the screen. What was the incident that triggered a long-lasting exciting for the boy in summer? He saw a mongoose and a cobra fight to death in the garden in that particular afternoon. How did the cobra regard his opponent? Yes, the cobra regarded his opponent as three feet long, superb fighter, clever and aggressive. Dear children, Shall we see the next question? How did the mongoose manage to escape from the snake's bite? Does anyone know the answer? Here is the answer. The mongoose managed to escape from the snake's bite with the help of the thickness of his hair. So, dear children, the boy in the story got a rare chance to witness the mongoose and a cobra meet face to face while he was sitting halfway up the tree. They are about to start a fight. Dear children, we will continue that in the next class. Before to wind up today's class, you have one more assignment left. Look at the screen. My dear children, the boy in this story narrates certain features of a few animals. Complete the chart given as the activity 3 in your text and send it to your class group. And dear children, don't forget to prepare a short note on these two animals based on the features that you have listed. Okay, my dear children, now it's time for us to wind up today's session. Stay home, stay safe.